Magnificent guest on a Monday morning. We're joined by Flex from the United View and broadcaster Rebecca Walker. Good morning to both of you. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's time at Manchester United has come to an end after being sacked following their 4-1 defeat to Watford. Yeah, the club won just one of their last seven league matches, finding themselves eighth in the league. Flex, I think it's got to be the first question to you. Reaction to this news. Is it the right decision? Is it the right time? 100% um, the right decision. Um, the right time, bearing in mind it, it should have happened earlier. But um, it's 100% the right decision. Manchester United just in free fall, in rock bottom. Um, this change probably should have been made after the drubbing by Liverpool um, in the first international break. We then um, get a similar uh, performance and result against Manchester City. Then you would say that it should have been made then, the managerial um, appointment um, or dismissal of, of Solskjaer at that point. We then wait and prolong, it, was, it was just prolonging the inevitable, really. And it, and it just it just got so bad that you, you were looking at it from from outside in and saying it's you started to feel sorry for Oli. He, he just couldn't bring it back round. And, you know, Manchester United fans, obviously emotional because it's, you know, a club legend. And but the sentiment had to be had to be separated. And, and in the end, like I said, it, it, it felt like Solskjaer was just waiting for the inevitable he was he was out of his depth was unable to, to turn it round um, and the change should have been made a long time ago Rebecca when asked what Manchester United could achieve could they challenge for the title a lot of people would were saying well they've got an excellent squad but their manager isn't good enough is it fair to completely blame Solskjaer Oh, absolutely not. I think it's, I mean, obviously in the end, the manager always takes responsibility, obviously for his players. But I think if you can't, it's hard to kind of get the best out of, you know, like you said, the, that squad on paper, it is, it, yeah, it puts them in a very, very difficult position. I think, you know, you expect, I guess, leadership in some of, some of the players, some of the more senior players to kind of step up, to kind of G up uh, the rest of the squad. But um, yeah, I think, you know, everyone plays their part in, um, you know, why it didn't work out for Oli, you know, at United. Uh, but I do think, obviously, at the end of the day, you know, the manager is obviously one of the most important people, a person, sorry, in the club. And uh, so, unfortunately, obviously, it didn't work out for him. Uh, but, again, yeah, I don't think we can solely blame him when you actually have excellent, excellent players in a squad like that. So, no. Yeah, on that, Flex, so many top-class players. If you look at Ronaldo scoring nine goals in 12 games, what is the root of the problem? It's, it's, it's a million dollar question. I mean, the, the people making the decisions at the top, the structure of the football club, um, it, it starts from the top down. Uh, you, could, you can almost say that maybe Solskjaer was, was never the right man, but I think with, with periods over his reign, he's shown bits of progression that were enough to get behind. I'm not going to be a hypocrite here um, on Monday morning and say at the beginning of the season with the type of transfer window that we had, I wasn't expecting a lot more from this squad and I was calling for Oli to be sacked in the summer because I wasn't. So I think you're, you're coupled with little moments of progression and a lot of the players who have kind of put up messages to Solskjaer, I think Paul Pogba did it, he said, thank you for the moments. And that's what Solskjaer's tenure at Manchester United was. It was it was moments and and passing, being able to pass on the baton to somebody probably more qualified in that in that position. I think, though, the players, particularly, though, against Watford, showed that there was there was almost nothing left. You know, that dressing room was in complete discontent, complete disbelief and, and, and at complete rock bottom. Um, but the lack of planning as well, you look at the, the backing of, 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 of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to be given a, a three-year deal earlier on in the season showed the complete kind of faith they had in him without any real thought to, what if this goes wrong? And, and you look at the, the lack of... Um, you know, scrutiny and, you know, the way that Manchester United prolonged the inevitable showed they had absolutely no plan for this. Absolutely mm. no plan. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit later in terms of what comes next. Mm. But the reason why it happened, it, it's not because Solskjaer didn't get backed. I think essentially it's just that it was the wrong man for the job who was just unable to, you know, take Manchester United forward, which is, which is, you know, it hurts as a Manchester United fan to say that. We all wanted Oli to do well. There was nothing more than I would have enjoyed for Oli to win the next 25 games in a row, win the league, win the Champions League. But unfortunately, it just was not going to happen. Yeah, how was it, Flex, for you watching his interview? Because it was quite a difficult watch, even for, you know, people who don't support Manchester United. It, it was. It was. It was a difficult watch. If you see any manager, you know, even if you don't support Manchester United, in a heartfelt message, you know, in that capacity, you could see he'd been really upset, and you could see at certain points it was quite difficult for him. Some Manchester United fans I, I saw were sort of saying maybe that wasn't the best idea to 
to put all of that out. Maybe some of it should have been edited. Some saying, listen, it's, it, Ollie wanted to do it. That's, that's his decision. And Ollie was never going to shy away from anything. That's one thing you cannot criticize Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer for is the backing and belief in himself and the fact that he wanted the best for this club. Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer wanted the absolute best for this club. Did he make bad decisions along the way? Was he learning on the job and was still learning himself how to be a better manager and get the best out of this squad? Yes, which ultimately ended in, in it not working out. But he wanted the best for this club. So watching that, it was really difficult because you know that he didn't want it to end like this. You know that the players didn't want it to end like this. And you know that the, the fans didn't want it to end like this. And, you know, he spoke about being welcome back and I'll be here and I'm, and I'm still a fan. And we absolutely believe him. So that was a, a tough, tough watch. Um, and you just think, where are we going to go to now? I think there's going to be a little bit more pain. We, we, like I said, we have no plan in terms of getting the permanent manager, Michael Carrick, to take over the forthcoming fixtures and then an interim. So I'm sure we'll get into that in more detail. But, but on Oli, it, it does hurt. And that's what I mean. I was, I was saying before we come on air, it, it doesn't feel good. Although it's delay, delay, delay in the inevitable, there's no plan. Um, but we're stuck with what we've got to do now. But in terms of Oli feeling like this, this isn't a time to, to I, me personally, um, to sing and dance and be happy um, that Oli had to leave in that way because no Manchester United fan wanted to see that. Well, let's recap what we know and then move this forward, all right? Michael Carrick, as you say, is in temporary charge. Manchester United will appoint an interim until the end of the season. Then they'll focus on a permanent replacement for Solskjaer in the summer. Right, we've been told, Rebecca, that PSG head coach Richo Pochettino is their number one target. And then second in line, I suppose, is Ajax's Eric Ten Hag. Right, so short term and long term. We'll go to you first, Rebecca, and then and Flex will ask the same question to you. Rebecca, short term, till the end of the season, who do you think is the right man or woman for the job? And same again in the summer long term. Well, I think, you know, you referenced Maurizio. I mean, I don't think Maurizio is going to be, you know, travelling to Manchester anytime soon when he's in a squad, when he's at PSG and he's, you know, working with players like Messi, um, and obviously Mbappe, uh, to name a few. So I think in interim manager-wise, I think, you know, I think the idea of having Michael Carrick, obviously, to the, you know, to do kind of like to, you know, help the lads until the, the end of the season, I think, is wise. In terms of that longevity, I actually think um, a, a manager like Tal would be really, really good. I think, you know, when they've had, they've had some big names at United, and I feel like it needs somebody who is very, like, far removed from that squad and from the kind of, like, the history of United as well. Somebody who, yeah, I guess, what well, I was going to say, somebody who's, like, a winner. But we had, like, Mourinho, we had Van Gaal, and they weren't able to do it. But I think uh, Targ is a very clear manager, and I think he will bring something um, different uh, to United for sure. Hmm. And, and Flex, I mean, what, what would you say? I mean, it, right now, if, if you were able to choose your short-term and long-term successor, who sticks out for you? I, I, first of all, I echo what Rebecca said in terms of somebody as far away from Manchester United as possible. And I don't mean that in a horrible way, but the sentiment and trying to mix the sentiment and, 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 and trying this, this Manchester United DNA approach, I think it's proved what can happen um, when it goes wrong. So for me in terms of the, the full-time appointment and potentially even the interim. I, I just don't want anybody really connected with Manchester United. Um, I, I think Ralph Ragnick has, has come up quite a lot and, and that, that impresses me. I look at the job he's done in the Leipzig organisation. He's, he's proved he can do some firefighting exercises as well and he's also proved he can do things at, um, at football development level. That is a, a structural change as well as him being able to firefight um, in the interim. Um, so I would probably go with that. There's been talks of Laurent Blanc, but again, Ex-Manchester United, I could see Manchester United maybe looking at something like that. I saw Steve Bruce, tell, I saw Wayne Rooney um, <laughs> being mentioned. I, 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 exactly, Bella. I don't, Sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful. No, I, no, it's true. No, I, I don't just, mean I'm to be just disrespectful. I'm because but... of the way you said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bet you are. Um, it, <laughs> it, it, I, I just, thought, I just want to be so far away from that. And I, the, the problem that I've got now is that with the situation that Manchester United have put themselves in. It is absolutely the right thing to do to, to have Michael Carrick there because there is nobody else. Um, and the fact that McKenna and Phelan are going to stay there um, alongside with him, there's not much that's probably going to change in the, in the next few matches. You know, it wasn't a dictatorship under Oli. Oli was always very vocal saying that we all make the decisions together. So for me, I'm not expecting any huge changes in performance and huge changes in team selection with those guys still staying there. So it's about trying to get through the next few games. Um, and for me, Ralph Ragnick would, would be top of the list but I do worry um, because you know 
players wise it's the same people taking training it's the same people making decisions um for the short term but like i said because of the position we put ourselves in what more could they do? Mm. Well, Flex has mentioned quite a few names there, Rebecca. We've been told that Cristiano Ronaldo is keen for current Spain boss Luis Enrique to take over at Old Trafford. How much of a say do you think Ronaldo would have? That's interesting. I mean, obviously, he's going to have a massive say. It's Cristiano Ronaldo, he's a club legend. You know, he's going to, he carries weight in that club. But I think, again, you know, what Flex is just alluding to. It's about removing the emotion for this United squad. It's like a team like United, they, you know, the history that they carry, you know, obviously everyone knows they're not where they should be. Uh, and I think we need somebody who's super as objective as possibly uh, as possible um, in order to make this kind of decision. I think if we start relying on one person's, you know, opinion to bring in their new head coach, you know, again, we could just be back where we are, you know, again, with Oli, with Van Gaal, all the kind of managers that United have had since, obviously, uh, Ferguson, you know, stepped away in 2013. Yeah, I just think it's just hard because, obviously, his, the shadow of, obviously, Ferguson and his legacy is actually so prolific mm -hmm. that it's so hard to kind of, you know, and even, I guess, you know, obviously, still his kind of involvement with the clubs as well, small, small. Um, I just think it's so hard. So I don't know if it's if it would be super, super wise to just have to be relied on, obviously, what Cristiano Ronaldo said because of all that he's achieved, you know, at United and then obviously at Madrid and obviously, you know, um, his tenure as well in, in the uh, Italian league as well. So I don't know. I think it needs to be as objective as possibly can. Mm, I've been giving it some thought myself. But I don't think it, it's not a huge surprise to say that I've think that Pochettino long term would be the, the right person in the interim. I will surprise you because I actually think Arsene Wenger in the interim until the end of the season is who I would target. Mm, All right. but, I'm uh, not sure uh, about that, Tom. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm I, knew not you, sure. I, I knew you were going to laugh. I knew uh, you were going to laugh. But I, I, I'm going to throw sure. two more names at you, actually, um, because we've got BBC saying that Zinedine Zidane not interested in the job. The Daily Mail and The Sun are saying that Brendan Rodgers has been approached. What do you think of those two names, Flex? Yeah, there, there were names that were being spoken about uh, a lot before the inevitable happened uh, on, on Saturday evening. Um, Zinedine Zidane, you look at what he's won, he's serial winner, you know, multiple um, trophies at Real Madrid. Uh, he could come in, he could work with the likes of Varane, he could work with the likes of Paul Pogba, obviously worked with Ronaldo already. Um, I, just wor I just worry that... The main thing is that he doesn't want to come here. You know, I think if Zidane was available, he's there. He's sitting there right now, relaxing. Um, they could have gone and got him. They could have gone and got him. We wouldn't even be in a situation where we're looking at Michael Carrick for a few games and then an interim. So something's up there. Unless it's Manchester United, don't see him as the right man. Um, there's such an obvious candidate there um, that they could have made it happen. So I would, I would worry about trying to prolong convincing him it should be a really easy move the same way if they wanted Antonio Conte and wanted to, 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 pull the, to pull the plug then they could have done it I just don't think they see him as that um, Brendan Rodgers I've got a lot of time for Brendan Rodgers I think you know people kind of sleeping on what he's achieved I, I, I think he's in bad form right now with Leicester which probably doesn't help and the fact that he's tailed off towards the end of seasons and not got the Champions League football that maybe Leicester um, Leicester City's performances have deserved. It gives you know Manchester United fans something to think about, and obviously the ex-Liverpool connection. But I think he's a fantastic coach. I think he works really well with young players, similar to Pochettino in a way. Um, and he has actually won something now as well, which I'm sure Pochettino will do by the end of this season, by the way. Um, but I think long. What I will say is, although it's frustrating being a Manchester United fan right now, we have to get this decision right. Whatever's happened has happened. If we have to wait, wait to the end of the season to get who we really want and who is really going to be the, the successor here at Manchester United, whether it be Pochettino, whether it be Eric Ten Hag from Ajax, who I think now should be the top candidate. Um, just get it right and don't make it an ex-Manchester United legend. So I like those names, Tom, but again, Zidane's not going to happen because I think it would have happened already. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't feel right. Rodgers, I think because he's now in a bad bit of form, um, it, it, it feels like it may be too big for him. So I think they've, they're working on who to get at the end of the season. I think it will be Pochettino or Eric Ten Hag personally. OK, uh, Rebecca, don't worry. We are going to talk about Antonio Conte in just a moment. But first, let's just get a very brief roundup of your thoughts of Ollie's three years in charge. I'm going to steal Tom's line, the good, the bad and the Ollie. Um, Flex, <laughs> let's start with you. The good. What, what was your highlight for Ollie? Um, it, it's got to be the night in Paris. I mean, it didn't lead to winning the trophy, but in terms of gathering that emotion obviously I was there in the stadium and even every every other Manchester United fan around the world watching that comeback 
Um, whether you think it was stupid or not to think it, you kind of thought at that stage, do you know what? This is it. Oli's announced himself. You know, you had calls from you know likes of Rio Ferdinand saying, give him the job. This is it. He's announced himself. Um, maybe some outside may say that was a demise, kind of going overboard then. But I tell you what, being in the Parc de Prince at that, that time and experiencing that emotion, um, you, you can't help but feel that that was his highlight. Yes, we've had some good wins against the likes of Chelsea away from home, um, Pep Guardiola um, and Manchester City away from home to, for some good highlights. But that for me was, was, was the highlight. Right, Flex, you've got 10 seconds to do the bad, which is the moment that sealed Ollie's fate, and then one word to sum up his, United, his time at United manager as a whole, which is the Ole. Technically, it could have been um, the Europa League final not getting there, but we managed to rejuvenate ourselves with, uh, with, the, with the transfer window. So I would say the 5 0 to Liverpool was probably um, the end. Um, I was floating with words like disappointing and sincere, but I'm actually going to go with incompatible. Um, it was that relationship that just was never going to work, unfortunately. We wanted it to, but the incompatibility was just too high.